it doesn't matter what trauma you went through in your life God is able to heal you I'm telling you the right way to deal with them yes the lifestyle they're living is sinful it's hated by God it's condemned by God and we need to say that but you can't say that to somebody who doesn't care about you think you gotta bring them to a place of realizing this is the Word of God and then once they know this is the Word of God they believe in the Word of God then bring out that truth and you'll watch them crumble and receive it and look for freedom so the church has been going on around it the wrong way and so we need to go out there shine our light then maybe they will stop doing their pride meetings why because our light will be too bright on the streets no darkness will want to go out there well they don't believe in your god they're godless and i told you a godless person does not have the second nature so they don't think anything there's a distinction between evil and wrong for them whatever they're doing is right and is justifiable why because the second nature is still not there to convict them of what they're doing is wrong if we teach this People will be able to understand why sinners sin and they don't stop sinning because they only have one nature and that nature is a nature of sin and it will not stop sinning until the second nature comes in then they start feeling like uh -uh, I'm not supposed to do that Paul was a murderer until the road to Damascus then when the second nature kicks in Paul is no longer murdering people but preaching the gospel well, that's why I always say that the only message you can preach to the world is Jesus died on a cross for their sins. Repent and receive Jesus. So whether they are homosexuals, whether they are fornicators, liars, adulterers, there's one message given to them. Repent and get right with God. You can say, this is what the Bible says about that group of people. Because then you can say, because they can ask, the second question was coming was this, do you hate them or do you love them? And you can say, hate is a strong word. I will not use that. I love them because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the world includes all liars, fornicators, adulterers, all those people are in the world. And scripture says God so loved the... But I do not, based on my faith and my conviction, I do not validate that lifestyle because this is my faith this is my belief and what this book says is what i believe in so i'm going to tell you that the bible says that all liars fornicators adulterers homosexuals they will wind up where they will wind up where in the lake of fire that's what the bible says so you have to be plain about what the bible says but say this but i love them and i pray for them that they will come to this revelation of truth so that they can find freedom and healing in Jesus name it's as simple as that you have not compromised you're saying what you believe is but you're giving them a door of hope to come in on the pulpit I can tell you that but when somebody comes to me who has that lifestyle I first of all want to gauge are they saved or they're not saved if they're not saved they're gonna hear a clear gospel of what Jesus did on the cross once they receive Jesus then we're gonna to go to that area immediately because then I'm not afraid why because then they're in a place to receive it because the Spirit has come in there it's easy to receive we can't defend Christians who claim to be born again yet they condone that and they defend that because by doing that they're denying their own are you getting me when you are talking about Christians who claim to be born again, yet they refuse to say that the Bible calls it abominable, that is wrong. You have to say what the Bible says and you have to read it to them. This is what the Bible says. But if they ask you, do you hate me? Then you can say, no, I don't hate you. I love you and I pray for you that you'll come to this truth. And if you know what we've been teaching here about dividing between spirit and soul, you can even help them further because then you can explain to them what the old nature got them into and what the spiritual nature want to bring to them. And you'll have more success talking to these people. We want to shout loud about homosexuals and lesbians going to hell. But that scripture says liars, fornicators, gossipers, drunkards, slanderers, 
they're all grouped up together so then we need to be as, as angry with slanderers and drunkards as we are angry with them why are we not making a lot of noise about slanderers do you see the hypocritical of christians here okay we oh, oh, oh all the homosexuals are going to hell well the bible says drunkards are going there too liars are going there too fornicators are going there too adulterers are going there too gossipers are going there too backbiters are going there too so let's make a whole big deal about all of them and see how many people will remain in your church so many people who practice those things in our churches they sit on our pews every sunday but we don't condemn them we select a few group of people and we point our finger to that this does not justify their sin this just says that we need to call sin sin whether you are a lesbian a homosexual liar cheater a drunkard we need to call sin sin tell somebody call sin sin do you see how quickly we can become religious and take our pointing finger to one direction when we have a lot going on here there's three fingers pointing at you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes and turn to him he will not turn them away but he will draw them to himself whosoever believes so if a sister who is in lesbian sin believes in Jesus and comes into the light God's power is able to transform deliver and heal them if a brother who is bound with homosexual sin comes to faith and repent of their sin they can turn around and God can change their lives and listen I'm not going to sit on the seat of God and fail to consult God about how he feels about him. One day God told me this. He said, son, consult me before you speak to my creation that I died for. You didn't die for them. So before you speak truths, make sure it's my truths and presented exactly the way I want it. Because you could wind up bruising a fruit instead of harvesting it. Jesus died on the cross for all sinners all sinners liars cheaters and it can deliver you too just like it delivered Paul who was a murderer it can deliver you and set you free oh hallelujah oh hallelujah isn't it good to have a balanced gospel let us not be the religious Pharisees that washed the outside of their cups but the inside they had their own issues how many of you have issues? Come on, let's see the hand. Be sincere with me. Come on. Yes, that's like Peter. When Peter says, you know, wash my head and my feet too. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. All of us have some issue that the Holy Spirit puts his finger on every day. Next time you see somebody that is in a horrible sin that you're not in, you're going to want to help them to get out of that sin. But if, if you don't believe in my faith, I'm not going to talk to you about the faith you don't believe in. But if you believe in my faith, then I will tell you what that faith says. And if you believe it, you'll find freedom. This is the way to go. This does not mean that you're compromising. It means that you're telling them the truth as it is. But you're also telling them, I love you and there's hope for you. Thank you for allowing me to see them as you see them. Thank you for allowing me to see the price of your death on the cross thank you for allowing me because there was a time where I could not condone that kind of a person but God told me how many times have I condoned you how many times have I put up with you how many times have you let me down? How many times I have had to wait for all these years for you to get to a place where I can tell you to do something and you do it? Since that day, I embraced the perspective of God's heart. You know, you can have truth, but that truth is mixed up with yourself. You can speak the truth, but the truth is mixed up with your bias. Because how I have been raised up and my experiences can influence what I am saying to somebody else and it may not be God's truth it may be truth based on my make sure that whatever truth you're speaking has Jesus in it and the Lord says I am holy but I am loving compassionate kind 
merciful, long-suffering, all those things are attributed to me, but I'm still holy. Patient. I wait on them more than you will wait on them. I used to be frustrated when people don't grow quickly and become mature Christians. I would start complaining. You know, like little babies grow up and, you know, they need, you know, to, you to put up with their falling down and, and dropping everything around. You know, you got to do all these things, you know. For me, it used to be, you got to get up in one day and walk. Until the Lord says, no, did you walk in one day? <laughs> All right, let me encourage you. Love like Jesus loves. Don't compromise like Jesus did not compromise. Even though he was called a friend of sinners, he never sinned with them. He still spoke the truth to them. In love, all right? 